I, I mean, dirt bikes is, I mean, it is my whole life. In order to be good at really, I mean, any sport I would assume, and in this sport as well, you have to put everything, everything that you have into it. You have to have a family that supports you. And there's so many sacrifices that have to be made that no matter what, this becomes your life if you want to be the best. And it's the biggest thing, you know, I've ever been a part of in my life. It's, it's you know, it's, that's the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning and it's the, the last thing I think about when I go to bed. It's, I mean, it really becomes a, it becomes a lifestyle. Everything you do is so you can be better on the motorcycle and have better results. And, um, you know, I like that a lot. Hang on tight. Ryan riding out here compared to the racing, I mean, there's definitely days to where he's, you look at him and you're like, there's nobody that can do that right there. Like, you know, it's unreal. He'll put laps together. I've seen him put laps together out here that it, that it, it blows my mind. Like, he knows he can turn it up a gear at any time he wants to. And I think that comes with confidence and, and mental strength. I think Ryan is one of the most mentally tough people I've you know, ever met. Feeling on the bike to me, honestly, is when you, you come around and you know you're just hitting everything perfect. Everything's flowing. You're not getting wheel spin where you should. You're you're just hooking up everywhere. Everything you're connecting the track perfectly, and you know you just know when you come around to the finish line jump right here that the pit board is just going to be you know exactly what you want to see. And just seeing the perfect lap time, it's just like heaven on earth. And just like yes.
I mean, I think I'm living the dream. Um, you know, I never thought that I'd be around these guys and I get to ride at this awesome track every day. And, you know, I've grown up in this sport. Obviously, I have the best racer in the world to ride with every single day as a gauge. And um, the best people around me, uh, one of the best teams out there. And, you know, train with the best trainer in the world. It's just like, it's unreal to me. Welcome to my place, The Rocks, you know, this is, this is where I live. We're pretty much at the bottom of Australia. This is our town in a way, like the family's town, and we're only about 100 deep, and every one of them's probably related in one way or another. I just love being left alone. I love my own company, and when I want to be able to do something, I want to be able to do it, you know? Like, I don't want to be in the city where I've got guidelines and restrictions because I've been in there and it gets you in trouble. <laughs> I was born in the 80s with that summertime love, then changed the whole game like what have I done? At the gutter I come to touch the bright sun, and from the highest heights, mother I jump. We don't have the most fanciest of cars and the fanciest of houses, but we've got the beautiful ocean, beautiful land, Australian freedom, and I'm loving it. I can do it anywhere I want to do it. If I'll sleep when I die, it's worse, it's down that showbiz, power to the people. We all have each other's backs, that's for sure, and there's no locks on the sheds. I, I normally leave my bike outside and give her a hose down in the morning, do an air filter, and 100 metres, I've got one of the sickest little jump tracks with all my bobcat and all like my comp and stuff. I don't know what my riding style is, but I think you just, you're giving your riding style and that's it. There's a certain time where I am riding that I get this like huge rush of adrenaline and something happens. It's, it's excitement, it's adrenaline, it's all the above. And when I get that a rush of adrenaline, I can make something pretty special happen. <laughs> When you want to hit the real stuff, she's out the back, you know. There's about a 12k whooped out track that you just pin down. It's a four wheel drive track and it's just perfectly groomed every day because the wind blows it all over and the rain will set it in. And you've got sand dunes as far as the eye can see. And man, it's like a playground out there. You can make whatever you want. If you've got the balls to hit the jumps, <laughs> you can hit them. Chance to make a change. All the energy swirling all around us. Infected, we get affected. This is profound stuff. I pay the youth homage cause I know their views honest Can you read between the lines of the news comments? Fighting over the land just to take some fuel from it I guess oil boils down to some cool profits So war, what is it good for? Really, who wants it? Like This is me, it's Australia, it's the rocks Even if I didn't ride dirt bikes, I'd still be here, you know This is just where I want to be and I love life here too much Feeling called life. You want me to 
Dakotas. I'm 21 years old. I'm from Peabody, Massachusetts. Scott Spinney, 21 years old, Jacksonville, Florida. Tom Parsons, I'm from Citra, Florida, uh, and we're at my house. Don't sweat the technique. Jimmy D's the ripper. Everybody knows he's he's a ripper. Everybody loves watching him ride. Let's trace the hits and check the file. Let's see who bit the dot tech the style. I flip the script so it can't get filed. I can't even describe Tom P. I don't even know what to say about this guy. <laughs> going out there, going upside down, pulling hands off the bike, grabbing fenders, yeah, looking back at us like it's nothing. I don't understand how he does it. I think you're gonna see some tricks from this guy today. That's what you see. And some unknown whip from Spin Dog. <laughs> I'm calling that he has the biggest whip all day, Spinny. And I still make hits for beats. Parties, clubs, and cars and jeeps. My underground sound by face the streets. MC wanna be then I play for keys. When they sweat the technique. This year during Supercross, I started me and Tom P were riding here and getting the Supercross track pretty dialed in, and then we'd get done doing our motos and we'd be like. Uh, all right, let's hit the ramps. And then it's just overall, we just started hitting the ramps here. And it was like almost once a week, I come up here and just start riding. And just so much fun to come here and be able to do motos. And then when you're done, be able to have fun and go out on your bike and just enjoy yourself and whip it out with this guy. Scientists try to solve the context. Philosophers are wondering what's next. Pieces took the lab to observe them. They couldn't absorb them. They didn't deserve them. My ideas are only for the audience ears. For my opponents, it might take years. Pens who depends on scores. Let us put together from a key to cause. I'm also a sculpture. Born with structure. Because of my culture, I'm a perfect constructor. Technical style that a beat full of technology. Complete sights and new heights after I get deep. You don't have to speak, just see. And peep the technique. <laughs> Sweat the technique. I speak in the squeak, it's totally cheap. And I get deep in the beat, they complete. Pull with the seat, never weak, I'm obsolete. They never grow old techniques, become antiques. Better than something brand new, cause it's original. In the wild, that I have much more value. Classical, too intelligent. I, like, I think the biggest, the sickest whips are when you just go to the right and you just lean and stand up and throw it like the one Hanson did at X Games where you just, the whole bike goes. But I think some turn downs are pretty sick and like I love doing turn downs where you come up to the jump from the right and you turn the bar to the right and you just let your left hand just, there's certain times where if you look at a picture my left hand's not even on the bike. You just push the bar and just crank it like, I don't know how to describe it, I just do it. <laughs> I just done it my whole life, I don't know, I just turn the bike and it whips out. <laughs> I mean I'm a little more like got it down to a science because trying to figure out how to whip it big enough to compete with those guys it a lot of the gyro and everything comes into effect and on a flat whip basically to get it upside down when I go up the ramp I'm leaning back and actually pulling pretty hard to almost loop the bike out and once you loop the bike out it's really getting under it and just pulling it down and that's what you try and get it upside down and then after that you're just hoping you come back straight. How's it look? Oh, it actually looks pretty good. It's not as big as I was thinking it was going to be after doing those ones. Oh, jeez. That's nice. Yeah. Do you want to go right here? And then right off the crack? Yeah. So why don't we do like... Skinny it up, you know? I still feel like I'm going to end up like off the ridge. <laughs> we got to do it. Good luck, man. Good luck. We came up here to Sand Hollow. It's you know similar to Moab, but you know we're we're uh, able to do whatever we want pretty much, and it's just open. 
Utah, it's a beautiful outdoorsy world out here. Riding is just endless. You show up to these bluffs on the edge of the mesa and it's just ridiculous, you know? We're, I didn't, we didn't even realize how big the cliffs were. We're riding around and coming to the edge and then all of a sudden there's just probably an 800 foot drop. The terrain right here is insane. We got like Red Bull Rampage downhills and then sand dunes and then huge boulders that are bigger than houses. At first when we got out here, I was like scared because you get halfway up a rock and you're either committed or you're getting hurt or your bike is getting hurt because uh, the rocks are so big, there's some major consequences. Awesome to get the chance to ride with Taylor and Kyle and all this stuff. Like, we were just confident with each other's riding abilities, and we're hitting these lines that, you know, the normal person would look at and just shake their head and be like, what are these knuckleheads doing? go like a mile per hour and <laughs> Taylor wants to just launch big jumps and go fast so there's a huge difference there <laughs> kind of have some trial skill and some moto skill and stuff so it's like a crazy combination of all of us pretty much we've had some of the coolest uh, you know desert scenarios that I've you know wanted to ride like we found a bowl I've always wanted to hit a bowl like that and we were talking about it and sure enough there's one here and we found it and it was awesome to ride I'm definitely pumped to be able to ride with these guys we have so much talent within I think the three of us that we can go kind of do anything you know what this Let's do what the mountain bikers do. When we went up on this hillside, and we're like, let's see how many different lines we can find down this. And we just removed some rocks and just found the biggest cliffs we could drop off of that we could do yeah. without killing ourselves. <laughs> it turned out great. had the confidence with those guys and we were just running in a train down these gnarly drop-offs doing the Red Bull Rampage stuff and a lot of it you know we were kind of limited on time and we just did it first time all together didn't even do test runs and went for it. It's an awesome experience to be out here with these guys and tear it up and I just wish we had more time to come out and stay here and do it all the time, not even have to race. Basically out here having a good time, like riding with my friends, you know, it's why we all ride dirt bikes anyway, so it was kind of cool to come out here with these guys and I'm friends with them outside of just going out and free riding anyway. We all race together too, but off the track we're all really good buddies, so it's definitely helped me for this stuff. Just good old-fashioned dirt biking and having a good time out here in Utah. 
Definitely need to make a return trip. Time it makes you old. Spirits makes you wise. You're only a fool who judges life by what he sees in other people's eyes. The decisions that you cast affect the outcome of your game. And the only person's gonna think about you is the one that's standing in your shoes. Obviously racing is what a lot of people like want you to do and results is what gets sponsors and money. I mean bottom line I ride to have fun and I, I still enjoy racing and I'm trying to do it as long as I can and maybe make something happen with that but at the same time I like just riding my bike, touching up my skills, riding in the hills and uh, free riding, that's what I grew up doing so I, uh, I love it. Southern California is pretty good. I mean, uh, during the summer it sucks. Obviously, it's really hot and uh, there's not much rain. But when it's winter time and Supercross, basically any Supercross track, if it rains too much, is shut down. So instantly everybody just goes straight to the hills and throws a shovel and builds new stuff. And uh, there's basically endless possibilities out there. You got Octeo Wells, Beaumont, Ritchie Canyon. They're rolling hills everywhere. So if you're willing to put in the work and throw a shovel and build yourself a lip, I mean, you can basically do whatever you want. One brief recollection of all the people in my life that have come and gone. One brief beat a moment of people I've loved. Of people that I have wronged. Long lost for the long ones gone. This plan can I see to mend this broken wing. So the love for life dissipates in a new beat. Right before I think. But no one will think about it. I'm just myself. A distraction is as big as my emotions. In the winter, uh, the whole crew is definitely Darren Durham. He, uh, he's awesome. When he was getting coming off an injury this year and uh, we did a lot of riding in the hills, build a lot of jumps and stuff with him and then uh, obviously Twitch and Andy backing, uh, Hanson come out every once in a while, Doug Parsons, it's basically everybody that's been around for a while and that's, that's just what they like to do, throw a shovel and go out there and find new hits and stuff so uh, that's basically like the crew, it's sometimes more than others and it depends, but sometimes you'll get some racers out there that want to come out, but a lot of teams obviously uh, shut that down pretty quick. So basically, freestylers and people like myself that just enjoy the yacht and ride their bike and see what we can come up with.
Got everything packed up out at the Oregon Dunes and uh, finished up some filming out there and got on the road and headed uh, out here to beautiful Yonkala, Oregon. And uh, we're out here at Justin Hill's house and the track looks insane. Can't wait to get out there and uh, just check it out. What up? Yo, Berman, dude, you're here. Let's moto. Let's rip, dude. Yeah. Yeah. From day one, my swim my leg over a bike, I was super pumped on it, loved to ride my bike and loved to accomplish things and gain things on the bike and it's just, it's my thing, it's my sport. Justin reminds me so much of Josh a couple of years ago, it's crazy, he looks just like him, rides like him, it's, it's cool. As far as just being on the bike, having fun, like I love getting into a nice tacky rut, landing it over just right, getting on it a little earlier than everyone else. Behrman's talented, like you know, he's just he's one of those dudes that has a cool style on the bike and he's fun to watch ride, so. Um, you know, it is, it's fun watching him hit all the jumps that I hit and whip. I watch videos of me doing it, and now I got somebody else good doing it. It's, you know, it's a, it's a pretty cool thing to have somebody else good out here. I've hit a handful of pretty gnarly jumps in my life, but this devil downhill, dude, I mean, like, it's very nerve-wracking, you know. If you get a little bit out of shape, you could just die for 70, 750 feet. been right along with us and I'll tell you what man he gets on that dozer he will stay out there all day you do wake up next morning and there's just a new section over there You're like whoa dude you built that last night It's just moto, moto, moto. So that's how it's always been. Dirt bikes basically is my life. I mean, um, Especially at this level, you have to live, eat, sleep, breathe, everything for motocross. It's still the most fun thing I can do in my life, and I still love to ride every day. Get with this. We're here at Club MX training facility in Chesterfield, South Carolina. It's a place that me and a friend started a few years back, three years ago almost now.
This year I've done a few GNCCs and um, I've been selected to do the ISD um, in Sardinia in October. Riding in the trees is something that's kind of new to me. Uh, I've always done a little bit of it, but this year I've kind of stepped up my program with riding in it more and just something that I like to do, something that I enjoy. I think it helps with uh, motocross. Our main track, it features some pretty big jumps, um, a few different kinds of terrain. We have some white clay, some red clay, some red clay sand mix, just sand. We have a little bit of everything all on one track, so it's um, really beneficial because you have to just uh, be on your toes all the time and it teaches you a lot of different skills in, in one little lap. I feel like I'm just on like a resurgence of a new beginning. Uh, like coming back here to the States, I'm only 23 still, and um, I feel like, yeah, I'm just kind of getting started, getting my feet planted here, and um, hopefully a long ways from the end of it. Up. Yeah, looks like there's some awesome, awesome stuff. with me. 
Do it up. I just got it tapped and forked. Yeah. And it's money. Sometimes you just gotta get away, man. Like, put it all to the side and bring you right back to where you started just riding. I have four kids, happily married, awesome wife. I got motorhomes now, big trailers, buggies. I don't need all that stuff. Riding the desert for sure is where my heart's at. I'm not from the desert, but coming out here, it's the ultimate freedom. You go wherever you want. You can get creative, you can build jumps, you can kind of just let your mind and your imagination get the best of you and have a blast with it. I have a career that is also my hobby. When I go to the sand dunes, I definitely like to twist it and try to get up fourth, fifth gear. As long as I can do that, I'm gonna keep on rocking it until the wheels fall off. As a whole, riding in the sand dunes is my favorite type of free riding because there's just really unique feel to it. It's like powder. You know, you mix that with learning what, when, and where you can make jumps and how to make them. It's like magic. Killer Kelly Hustler, get it by all means. The people know whatever they need, they can call me. California Hustler, moving and we muscling. And we don't go with the pigs like a muslin. For the green, we rushing. No, not my style. I'm talking quick, fast, in a hurry right now. Can't be a victim. Short. I just want to be a baller with my own ball court California hustling I look for big jumps, something I can get whiffed on, of course, but it's not so important to me. Definitely not important to do tricks. I definitely look for something that's going to look 
cool on camera too. I mean, all that stuff kind of comes into effect when I'm searching for drums. Dunes are rad because not only the feel of it, you know, you do feel like you're like on water or powdered snow. It's hard to explain, but you just float on top of it. And once you learn the kind of where the hard spots are and the soft spots are, you can really get creative out there and the possibilities are endless. I mean, you just gotta use your imagination. Yeah, see life has its lessons, y'all. When you a California hustler. Take them to church. Yeah, put your best foot forward. Become a victim of these streets. Money make the world go round. Money make the world go round. Money make the world go round. When I'm out here in the Ocotillo and the mud humps and stuff like that, I look for the really steep stuff and kind of tech riding. Really steep lifts, probably the most vert that I can. Just feel comfortable launching off of them. I'm doing something that a lot of people don't mess with. That's cool with me, because I like to be different, I guess. It definitely is a way of expressing yourself. If I'm doing the same thing as everybody else, there's not much expression in that. I'm just trying to kind of join the sheep. Growing up real close to Glen Helen, when I was on 80s, I used to come out here on the Thursdays and try to run down as many pros as I could, or at least hang a wheel for a few corners. And uh, now being one of those pros, it, uh, looking back on it, it's pretty cool. We just kind of go to town, make and create whatever we want, ride it, and then uh, burn laps.
once you get in the groove, you know, everything's kind of slows down. It's not happening as fast. And you can just start plugging off, you know, faster laps, faster laps. And then you can almost push the limits because things tend to slow down. The relationship I have with Glen Helen and uh, the owners and the people that run it, to be able to come out here and have it as, you know, my private track on, uh, on a weekday is awesome. Surfing and motocross are pretty two opposite sports, I would say. Um, it's pretty much just totally different on the dirt bike. Your your heart rate's up, your adrenaline's pushing, your everything's just fast and high pace and really energetic and everything. And to where surfing, it's almost like the complete opposite. You know, you go out there and paddling, you know, waiting around for waves catch that wave and you're just pumped on it. They're pretty different, but I think that's what you kind of need, you know, two opposite ends and it's good for you. Chain Ranch track here is, is awesome. It's got anything you want. You know, you got your big jumps, your hills, your tighter super crossy type stuff, pretty gnarly whoop section, just everything. Bunch of fun jumps, berms, everything you want in a track, you can ask for anything more. This being my first year pro was was a pretty big eye opener for me. It was a good year for sure. I learned a whole lot, made me realize what, what I need to do for the future and, and what I need to do to be able to be a champion and be holding that number one plate one day. Two artists forever together, nothing can kill his dream. Cause with or without him, he'd still be free. Strong in his heart strings, striking chords. Every moment's a choice like sliding doors. He would roam from home, but love was here though. And love's that stuff that adjusts the bureau. It wouldn't be worth it without his mates. He wouldn't have learned this without mistakes. The best feeling on a dirt bike to me is when you come into a turn and you're wide open and just hit a berm or a rut and you're just like, man, that was sweet. Like, if I would have went any faster, I would have crashed, but I pulled it, and that was awesome.
Oh shoot, Russ, can you make sure my camera's on? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's on. Oh, I didn't even see the beeping. <laughs> Why, you're gonna complain? What, to do, what, to, what, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, when I'm ready, Elden, drop the gate, regardless if he has his helmet on or not. Yeah, I, I would say I'm, I'm, um, I'm the most picked on for sure. I think I kind of play the, you know, the redheaded stepchild a little bit, even though Ryan's the redhead in the group. Mother. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't even hit you hard either, because that's not bad enough. Oh, <laughs> Arby, you wait till he's done and he's teased, man. No. You know what I mean? Can't wait for the holidays. Check it. 106. That's, that's the hottest. Today's the hottest it's been all summer. I don't even know. I can't even tell you what I think about. Probably like butterflies, volcanoes, birds. I don't know. Planet Earth. Something. My brain probably wanders a lot. I don't know. Ah, damn it. <laughs> All right, yo, dudes. We're going to go here and see our boy Jimmy. KJC fitted, they're getting the bike fitted to do some big whipper tails. Yo, bro! I'm gonna try and throw it as big as I can. I can't let you guys down, so we'll say I'll either go big or go home. <laughs> I'm probably gonna go, uh, go big. <laughs> What's going on here, Cash? Bit of didgeridoo playing. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Hey, mechanics. Like I said, strategy game when it comes to fuel, boys, and uh, we're playing it. <laughs> we're deep in the game. <laughs> Dude, I got fire ants all over me. Damn it. Jokes? I got these socks on. That's a joke. My road ride this morning was a joke. Got any other bikes? <laughs> what, you don't think I have any other bikes? Take your pick. Thanks. My moon sand track is like, is like the other little part of my life not a whole lot of people know about. It's super awesome. You know, don't say that it's not because deep down you know it is. <laughs> I build sick layouts and uh, you know, you can call me a child if you want, but I'll probably be doing this forever. I feel like there's always somebody watching me, man. Ain't no jump big enough for me out here, I'll tell you that. I like big jumps. You guys, you take me out, show me all these little sissy jumps. Ha, ha, ha. 